bastardic side eye, criminal offensive side eye. What's going on? What's going on? Ciao. Hey, hi, hello. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess, and we got some unruly twist here. Oh well. That's not the point of this video. We're here to talk about, you see it, Branderson. And this article that was written about him. Now, everyone on the interwebs obviously has their own feelings about Branderson. Brandon Sanderson. Um, but this, this article, and I'm sure you've seen other people talk about it. I haven't watched anyone else's videos and I just read the article for the first time myself. And I, I have a lot of questions. However, comma, first let's thank the sponsor of today's video. Look what I mean. Now, I love all you dehydrated hoes, but y'all gotta get it together and start getting your hydration game up. Water ain't enough, sweetie. You need that liquid IV, double the hydration, and with lots of fun flavors. It has three times the electrolytes of sports drinks, five essential vitamins, B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C, a variety of delicious flavors, and they come in these really convenient, travel-friendly, single-serving packets. Now, the only thing I can't promise you with Liquid IV is that you get you a fine man making you one, but you know, I'm so sorry, best of luck to you. So like, let's all be better than the 75% of Americans who are dehydrated because we don't love that. We want to stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized and sunscreen. So you should try Liquid IV. Of course, I have a code. I'll put it on the screen so you can get your hydration on and we can all be thriving and glowing like the king, queens and in-betweens that we are. Oh, okay. all right. Thanks to Liquid IV for sponsoring today's video. So this article is entitled, Brandon Sanderson is your God. It was written in The Wire, um, or in Wired, not The Wire, on March 23rd. And I don't know, does it say the author's name? It doesn't, I don't, oh, Jason Key, maybe that's his name? Whatever, he sounds like a hater. Um, now, first and foremost, I'm a hater right then I'm black and then I'm a woman um <laughs> if you've seen that TikTok you know but so like I I can relate to hateration and holleration in this dancery however comma in this in this instant I think this is a bit much this is something you keep in your group chat you don't write and publish an article just my opinion now it's it's significantly long I will link it below if you haven't um seen it and you want to read it yourself so I'm not going to read the whole thing just parts of it but obviously he starts off Brandon Sanderson makes a lot of money I'm um, saying he makes about 10 million a year last year he made 55 million now I don't to to just so you know I am a Brandon Sanderson fan I'm not gonna ride or die for the man but I have enjoyed uh the majority of the books that I have read from him which is not all of them yet um uh he, does he have too much money yes I'm always going when I say eat the rich I'm talking about them too everybody even Adele I'm sorry but yeah he has too much money now is it 55 million because last year was the kickstarter which most people know about I talked about that too a lot of people did was that all profit I don't think so because he has his own publishing business and so he has a lot of employees a whole warehouse I'm sure he didn't net 55 million but still he probably still net several million and that's several million too much but anyway that's not the point but he starts off with that in the article and so he is just very I'm not even gonna use the word snarky because I think this goes past being snarky and it's just rude so he goes this is obviously a lot of money for anyone for a writer of young adult-ish never-ending speed-written fantasy books it's huge so He's saying, you know, he's probably the highest selling author of fantasy in the world talking about Kickstarter. And so after when he comes in to write this article, he goes into work and asks his co workers if they know him and not a lot of people or most people don't know him. And they're like, what? How do you not know this multi million dollar adult fantasy author? So he goes, on the one hand, who cares? Sanderson has millions upon millions of fans all over the planet. It doesn't matter that some losers at a single magazine, even if it is one of the nerdier ones, had never heard of him. On the other, 
The ignorance goes far beyond Wired. As far as I can tell, Sanderson, who has been topping bestseller lists for the better part of the 21st century, has not been written about in any depth by any major publication ever. Except like one magazine, there was a Mormon feature because Brandon Sanderson is Mormon. Um, so he's asking like, why? Like, why don't more people like generally know about him? And of course, he mentions people like J.K. Rowling, Margaret Atwood, George R.R. R. Martin, whatever. Um, but they said, Sanderson, when I eventually met him in person, makes versions of these excuses plus others for his writerly obscurity. It's kind of fun to talk about until it isn't. And that's when I realized in a panic that now I have a problem. Sanderson is excited to talk about his reputation. He's excited really to talk about anything, but none of his self analysis is for my purposes exciting. In fact, at the first dinner over flopsy Utah Chinese, this being days before I'd meet his extended family and attend his fan convention and take his son to a theme park and cry in his basement, I I find Sanderson depressingly, story killingly lame. And I just, I just, I, 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 I just, I, too much, too much. Um, so he talks about him sitting across from him in this restaurant in his normal Sanderson attire, which is a t-shirt, a graphic t-shirt and an ill-fitting blazer. He says, Brandon says that he wears this because it makes him look professional. It doesn't, he isn't, unless the word means only believing everything you say is worth saying. Sanderson talks a lot, but almost none of it is usable, quotable. I begin to think, this is what I drove all the way from San Francisco to the suburbs of Salt Lake City in the freezing cold dead of winter for? For previously frozen dim sum and freeze dried conversation? This must be why nobody writes about Brandon Sanderson. And I'm like, damn, come on, dude. Come on. And I think you would be hard pressed. And granted, I'm sure these people exist because, you know, super fans are gonna say whatever and they're gonna ride for their fans. Again, I'm not a ride or die. I would, but I, um, I would bet you though, if you listen to a, a good amount of Sanderson fans, they would not say, oh my God, I love Sanderson because of his rich poetic purple prose and he's the next coming of Shakespeare. And da -da 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 -da. like no one's like, oh my God, it's the way that he puts words on a page of the reasons I'm in his stories. No. Most people are not going to say that because it's not true. His writing is very simple, which is good because there's so much other shit going on, like the worlds and the overall the Cosmere and the magic systems that if you also had this very purpley prose or just very poetic writing, I think that wouldn't work. And a lot of Sanderson fans will tell you, yeah, his writing is just really simple. And some people don't like that, Val, and some people are like, I don't care because I like the story, I like the characters, I like the world building, I like the magic system. Teach their own, right? But this, I just think that is so cruel. Like, he says, recklessly, I say what's on my mind. I have to, his wife is there, his biggest fan. And so he says, maybe nobody writes about you because you don't write very well. And then he said that Brandon Sanderson agrees. And he goes, it's not that Brandon Sanderson can't write, it's more that he can't not write. Um, and then he talks about grammo, graphomania, the name of a condition, the constant compulsion to get words out, down as much as quickly as possible. Uh, then they, and Sanderson has talked about his schedule before. I don't know if I've mentioned it in a previous video, but I know I've like heard of his writing schedule. So really he, um, wakes up like in the middle of the day, like 1 p.m. he wakes up, it says he exercises, he writes for four hours, then he has time for his wife and kids, then he plays video games until like 5 a.m. and then he sleeps. And so there's also um, something later in the article that talks about his sister-in-law is his assistant. And so I think something, um, I agree with something I saw on Twitter that said this article because it just really was like he's this overwhelmingly basic white dude who can't write well and sells all these books and some of that well yeah yeah but still he has a huge fan base and still within the bookish community being a huge fan base is still very small amongst like people in general. So like if people don't read, they probably or don't read a lot or they just read the common things they see at like the airport or, you know, they read like the same type of book. You know, they probably don't know about Brandon Sanderson. Like it's not that that's not that hard to conceptualize. Like I just I'm like, what did you? 
what, what, what I want to know what his purpose was in setting out to write this article because like what did you not know about Sanderson already I'm not I've well, I was gonna say I never interviewed Sanderson I did get to um ask him some questions with Elle and Jesse in this video that we did last year year before last which was really awesome but I'm saying like if you wouldn't you look up things about the person you're going to interview and then you you ask them things that you don't know about so like I feel like most people would know this about Brian Sanderson he's a big nerdy dude who teaches they're on YouTube yeah he wears the same thing all the time he plays magic of the gathering gathering of the magic magic gathering magic the gathering I don't play it what else did you like he's not like out at the club you're not gonna find some salacious like cheating rumor like this is all very if you know anything about the bookish world and and I feel like if you didn't you should just give a google and you would find all of this very easily so I'm just like I feel like there was a bad intent malintent with writing this article and I don't like that you know what I'm saying this was someone's tweet that I wanted to share and they said everyone's so angry about the Sanderson, Sanderson article but I think it raises an important point about writing. If you examine the work of prolific and beloved writers at a sentence level you will find you will often find mediocre sentences and that's okay. Writing often just has to be invisible. They said gorgeous sentence after gorgeous sentence can be distracting however I do love to see good writing. I love to see a writing that's like a really sharp knife you don't even know it's sharp until you pick up a dull one and like um someone else said I firmly believe most authors are either great wordsmiths or great storytellers and most are not both and I think that is very valid it is really hard to find someone who is really adept at making a well-paced interesting story and also have beautiful writing um or have beautiful writing and all you know like I just find like that that's really difficult someone else said okay I think the person who wrote the other tweet that I'm thinking about deleted it but she was talking about Brandon and talking about his prolificness like how much he is able to write um like and his schedule is very dependent on people in his life specifically women his wife obviously being a caretaker caretaker of their kids and then his wife's sister so his sister-in-law being his personal assistant and so I thought that was really interesting to point out because yes it is often and not always that if a man is gonna have the or is so focused on his career and this in this case writing that there usually is a partner usually that is a woman behind them who is taking on the brunt of that work and so obviously if he did not have a wife who was doing all of this taking care of the kids you know whatever she does to manage the household they probably have hired help I don't know cooking whatever school um taking on all of that so he can be up until 5 a.m playing his video games and then sleep till one o'clock and then spend his time writing and so I just feel like this person could have added so many other like could have added so much more like nuance and different topics to the article to be like yeah let's examine why he is able to be this successful and why he's able to have this much time writing and why do people like like his books I think this person's a better writer and look at something about writing versus storytelling but this was just like let me talk about this popular author and how fucking lame he is and not really add anything of value to the conversation uh let's see so of course he talked about how how much he wrote like during the pandemic or like during the shut the lockdown time and all of his books um but he said most will hear this and think at that rate none of the words could possibly be any good they'd be right in a way and that's what Sanderson agrees with at the sentence level he has no great gift to English prose the early books especially and then he gives different examples about his writing and um he said I'll say it again he's simply not very quotable I spent days with the man I watched his YouTube videos made a dent in his podcast Empire most of it incredibly about writing like his books it all blurs together I typed some 40 pages uh 40 pages of notes for the story and who knows how many pages of transcripts the AI spat out that I fed it many hours of recorded audio now that I'm writing I find I'm referring to none of it possibly this is the influence of Sanderson himself on me so again 
you got all of this stuff that's just repetitive that's already out there that isn't new you weren't adding anything new to the conversation so again I asked what was the point of writing this article and if you sat down and you felt like it would all blur together why is it still so goddamn long and like you probably had a requirement to publish it but it's just like he even writes in here, this story has an ending, I promise. I'm sprinting toward it as if to a vacation. Like he said, like the best of Sanderson ending, my ending should surprise, should surprise you because you see Sanderson actually did say one thing to me, one miraculous thing that stuck that I remember these five months later, la 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 la. And then he goes, you're not ready for them just yet. You need more story for first. And so I don't know if he's doing this on purpose or not realizing that with all his, like, is he trying to mock or mimic Brandon Sanderson will like keep adding all of these because I'll be the first to tell you that a lot of the Brandon Sanderson books that I've read even though I've enjoyed them I'm like they could be shorter I will tell you that they don't need to be 1200 pages that's a you know like that's a fact it is rare that I have a read a book that that's long and I think every every page was worth it I will tell you that in a minute and so like what are you doing here obviously this isn't a 12 this isn't a 1200 page article but it's like you could just go ahead and get to the point because what else do you need to say and then he's like you're just not ready for that yet sounds like you were getting paid by the word and you just wanted to add more to bloat the article but okay so he gets around to um talking about sanderson and he said that his readers his legion his loving legion care about something else and so he is at dragon steel like the convention that brian sanderson has and he's seeing all these people in cosplay and all these people excited some people um bringing their children and he's trying to figure out like why why is this man worth all of this and people are talking about his characters um, someone said they feel like real people. Multiple parents said they've named their kids after their favorites, usually the princely protagonists who've overcome various depressions and triumphed uh, chival chivalrically? Woof. I've done some things I'm not proud of, one man tells me. Then he read the first Stormlight book, The Way of Kings, and now reformed. He has a two-year-old son named Calvin, which I just think is freaking cute. And the second answer to why Sanderson is his worlds. This is probably he's best known for world building. And some people don't, they think they don't like it. They're not impressed. And that's valid. But yes, it is. It's like people already like superheroes and comics and then having the Marvel Cinematic Universe is really fun to people. People love overlaps and Easter eggs and little hints um, and connections between things. And Sanderson created that with the Cosmere. So yes, obviously that makes, like, I just, this is a the point, like, you, there's so many things. Taylor Swift, I don't think she's overwhelmingly amazing. She has some really catchy songs. And you know, she seems like a relatable little white girl. And you could write a whole thing and just talk about how much you hate Taylor Swift. But you're missing the point of why people like certain things. They find a, co a connection or they find that person relatable and something is easy. They don't have to think too hard or they just, just people don't even have a reason. You could just be like, I don't know, I just fucking vibe with it. And so all of these different questions he could ask, points he could bring up, different topics he could discuss. He just wasted this time to get a bunch of clicks because he knows Sanderson is very popular with us book nerds and people who read. So he wrote an article and with that title, like, come on. Just to say bullshit we already know. You did nothing. You brought us nothing. He even says, but what am I saying? Gibberish most likely. Again, a waste of time. Sanderson is a bad writer. I've already said it. Here at the convention, most of the panelists, panelists aren't even writers. People don't care about sentences. They care about Sanderson. Okay, so these are the words he says that Sanderson has never said anywhere else or he doesn't think so. So obviously he's Mormon. So he said, uh, let's see, as I build books, God builds people. And you know, I could have lived without that. I, I, I didn't need that. So there's that. Also this author, they watched The Greatest Showman and he cried. Great. As I drive us back to the house, drop off the kid and then stay in the car with Sanderson a bit longer, talking about life, talking about worlds, my ending takes shape. The surprise is that it was Sanderson's ending all along. The ending of his best books, a character becomes a god, and the god beholds his planet below. If Sanderson is a writer, that is all he is doing. He is living his fantasy of godhead on earth. I just, I don't, I don't know if that's the end. Like he really, I think he really thought he did something with that ending. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm a god when I play The Sims, so...
if you've read the article or from what the excerpt you've heard, what do you think? And it's not something like I'm like, oh my god, my day is ruined. I can't believe he was so rude. It was just that everyone kept talking about someone to read. It. I'm like, yeah, that it, it just seems like a really fucking rude article. And I'm like, I just feel like you could have used this to do so much more or have more important conversations. But I did Brandon Sanderson did have a reaction to it. Um, so I wanted to look at that really quick because I didn't. So Brandon said not to harass the author of the profile, please leave him alone. And he said not sure how or if I should respond to the Wired article. I get that Jason in writing it felt incredibly conflicted about the fact that he finds me lame and boring. I'm baffled how he seemed to find every single person on his trip, my friends, my family, my fans to be wor worthy of derision derision but he also feels sincere in his attempt to try to understand while he legitimately seems to dislike me in my writing I don't think that's why he came to see me he wasn't looking for a hit piece he was looking to explore the world through his writing and that he and I are the same and I respect him for it even if much of his tone seems quite dismissive of many people and ideas I care deeply about the strangest part for me is how Jason says he had trouble finding the real me he says he wants something true or genuine but he had the genuine me all that time he really did what I said apparently wasn't anything he found useful for writing an article that doesn't make it not genuine or true. I'm not offended that the true me bores him. Honestly, I'm a guy who enjoys his job, loves his family, and is a little obsessive about his stories. There's no hidden trauma, no skeletons in my closet, just a guy trying to understand the world through story. That is kind of boring. From an outsider's perspective, I can see how it is difficult to write an article about me for that reason. But at the same time, I'm worried about the way he treats our entire community. I understand that he didn't just talk about me, but about you. As has been happening to fantasy fans for years, the general attitude of anyone writing about us is that we should be ashamed for enjoying what we enjoy. And that, the tone feels like it was written during the 80s. Look at these silly nerds liking things. How dare they like things? Don't they know the thing they like is dumb? As a community, let's take a deep breath. It's all right. I appreciate you standing up for me, but please leave Jason alone. This may feel like an attack on us, on you, but it's not. Jason wrote what he felt he needed, and as a writer, he is my colleague. Please show him respect. He should not be attacked for sharing his feelings. If we attack people for doing so, we make the world a worse place because fewer people will be willing to be their authentic selves. Good for him because I, he's better than me. <laughs> he is better than me. Um, so yeah, that was the article and Brando's response to it. Again, I would love your thoughts. Um, I just think, yeah, maybe he just had a different story in mind. I think he could have gone a different way maybe ask different questions. I don't know. And Brandon Sanderson isn't perfect. There's issues. <sighs> There's issues there. Hello, he's Mormon. He's a white man. I mean, what? But as with a lot of things, I think things are complicated. And to me, I just don't think this was needed. So anyway, that's it for me today. I'm going to go back and lay in bed. Thank you for watching. Uh, keep it cute in the comments, okay? Keep it respectful. Stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreen. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye! Oh, God! <laughs> Even the game pieces taste delicious, huh? Give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> I'm gonna put a disclaimer. Nah, watch around your dog. Nigel, drop it. Drop. We have it. Drop it. No. Not child approved.